Greetings, dear ones, vibe angels and frequencyers, sound workers, and all those interested in vibrational upliftment and um, sound therapy and vibrational healing. This is Wayne Perry here coming at you from the Sound Therapy Center of Los Angeles. I know it's been a little while, but I wanted to celebrate Father's Day in one way or another as I'm uh, <clears throat> waiting to hear from my daughter in the Midwest. I thought I'd put out a little video that I promised some months back about the frequencies of food and how you can raise your frequencies. Uh, so all the controversy is surrounding food and vegan diets and raw diets and uh, carnivorous diets and all that other stuff I keep seeing on Facebook. And I've, uh, I've never seen uh, shown on Facebook what I'm about to share with you. And this is why I promised some months back that I would do a, uh, you know, a live feed and uh, on um, um, food and the frequencies and sound. And uh, of course, you know, to eat healthy, we all know to uh, exercise and eat lots of fruits and vegetables and things like that to stay healthy. But there's more to it than that. There's, uh, you know, since we live in this vibrational world, this vibrational universe, and the new physics shows us that everything is vibrating. There's no such thing as solid matter. Now we know everything is in a state of uh, movement. Uh, people kind of are coming to understand that everything's energy, but a lot of people don't understand that it's not just energy, it's sound. There's really no difference between the word sound, frequency, vibration, pulsation, energy. They're, these are all really the same thing. They're just, you could say, different facets of the same diamond. So, um, you know, when we measure sound, for instance, how many pulsations or vibrations there are, we see how frequent the sound is, and that tells us its frequency. And then we measure the frequency in CPS cycles per second, or Hertz, HZ for Hertz. So this tells us uh, more about sound and how we can use it for our awareness. Now I've done other videos about the importance of a diagnostic uh, brain voice sound analysis. In fact, I just did one a few minutes ago on Instagram. That's why I'm kind of fired up. If you have uh, if you go on Instagram, you might want to find it. I think they'll only be up there for 24 hours. And I describe the um, the details of how one does a diagnostic uh, sound session, because I've had a lot of questions about that for the past year. And I talk about it in some of my videos, which you can actually view for free on my website, wayneperry.com. But I haven't really gone into the details of what goes on in a 90 minute diagnostic uh, sound session, which is so vitally important that one does to empower yourself to discover your personal signature frequency pattern and to use it for your healing and upliftment uh, on every level, physically, emotionally, vibrationally, spiritually. So I encourage you to explore my website, wayneperry.com, and also to go on Instagram and, and see if you can catch the, uh, the video I did today before it uh, disappears. And anyway, getting back to today's topic on raising your frequencies with food, um, you know, there's a lot of controversy about that. And the first thing I want to say, you know, uh, not only to the vegans out there, but to everybody that's uh, interested in a healthy lifestyle and eating healthy foods, is that uh, some of the, you know, more self-righteous vegans, which I try not to be, you know, I'm vegan, but uh, I uh, understand I want, and I want to put across that we, we're in the dimension of killing. In this third dimension, you can't go through life without killing. So some of these, you know, vegans and vegetarians that say, oh, well, we can't, didn't want to kill and you want to be sensitive to life. And you need to understand that you're killing uh, life forms when you drink a glass of water, when you walk down the street, uh, you know, there's, whether it's ants and, and on the ground or a little amoebas and paramecium in the, uh, in the liquids that we consume. I mean, you're, we're, we're killing, you know, on, uh, constantly on a daily uh, basis. So this doesn't justify that we should kill people and, and animals and every other kind of life form. 
the idea is to kill on the lowest level possible, the lowest frequency possible, because the higher the frequency, the more karma is involved, and the more we take upon our our soul and the more weight we have to carry. And if you want to use sound, if you want to use your meditation, and you want to use toning and vibrational principles to raise your consciousness, to go within, you have to be aware of these principles. You have to be aware of, of what you're doing and the principles behind uh, organic life in this dimension. So that's what I want to talk about because there are five major frequencies of life here in third dimension. And uh, I greatly look forward to returning to the deeper and higher dimensions where we don't have all the, uh, the pain and suffering and oppression that we have in this dimension. Uh, but I don't want to be, you know, negative. Everything is really unfolding perfectly. Uh, and I'm, I don't like the doom and gloom people <laughs> that uh, say, you know, yeah, there's a lot of oppression and wars and cruelty and, and terrible stuff going on in the world. And, uh, but when we look back to the beginning of time, it's always been the case. There's never been a time on planet Earth when there's been peace and joy and love and happiness and harmony. That's the purpose of this dimension. It's a training ground. And we have to understand that there's never going to be nirvana or peace on Earth, you know. And, and, you know, some people might label me being negative or or whatever, but I'm, I don't believe that I am. I believe I'm very positive because I believe everything is unfolding absolutely perfectly in this world. You know, there, you know, God's grace is always unfolding perfectly. And uh, I've learned from, you know, nine years ago when I was in a coma for 30 days and I was supposed to leave this dimension, but with the grace of God, uh, I was told that uh, I have more service to do and work to do, and I'm happy to, to do that, to be of service. I live a life of service here through sound, and, but it taught me some wonderful lessons. In the last nine years, I'm so, so grateful for the gifts I've been given and this beautiful opportunity to work with sound, frequency, and vibration to help those in need. And let's face it, we're all in need, but the greatest lesson I think I learned from all the pain I went through and uh, being in a severe auto accident, having my legs broken, having to have a liver transplant, had, being on, on dialysis for a year. I was told that I would be on kidney dialysis for the rest of my life. But thanks to, to uh, sound therapy and God's grace, I healed myself. I healed the hepatitis C that caused my uh, liver problems. I healed myself. My kidneys got off dialysis. I've just been so blessed and I'm so grateful to be able to heal the things that I've healed. Some of you that know me personally know about my, my uh, quest and my, my journey with the sound and healing, self-healing and all the things that I've healed with in myself, uh, healing hepatopulmonary syndrome, lung uh, problems, and being on oxygen for two and a half years. 24-7. I mean, all these things took place in the late, uh, you know, 2000 and came to a head when I was in a coma for 30 days in uh, uh, <clears throat> 2000. Uh, well, it started in 2010 and went through 2011. And on January 22nd in 2011, I came out of the coma and saw some of my dear friends that stood by me. And I'm so grateful for their support and so grateful for the grace that I was uh, given. Uh, even when I came out of the coma, I was praying to, uh, when I found out that I lost the sound therapy center that I used to have, that was a bit bigger than this uh, one that I'm in presently. But not only did I lose that, but I lost my life savings. I was homeless and penniless and in the hospital. And all I could do was meditate and just uh, ask to be taken home to get out of this crazy oppressive world and I just don't want to be here anymore. And I was just praying. And I, I mean, I was grateful that I was alive initially. But then when I found out that I was evicted from the house, the home that I, I was living in for 24 years, because the people that we sublet it to defaulted on the rent, and the landlord evicted them and me. And so, uh, well, I wasn't planning on telling this whole story. But, you know, that's kind of the way my life is. It's kind of a stream of consciousness, whatever comes through comes through. So please forgive me for digressing. 
but I will get to talking about the frequencies of food in a few minutes. But I just want to finish up my story because it's kind of unique that when I found out, <clears throat> when they felt I was strong enough to tell me that I was, uh, I'd lost my, my home and my, the sound therapy center, uh, I was concerned now about my life savings that was kind of stashed about $10,000 that I had stashed in this old uh, coat from Chicago. And then I learned that was stolen. Uh, when my friend retrieved it and the money was gone and I learned some cleanup maintenance people that were cleaning up the place, somebody had a big payday and got my $10,000. So, I mean, I was so bummed out and I guess depressed. I'd never been depressed in my life, but this depressed me enough being penniless and homeless. And so I, um, uh, I was just praying and meditating every day while I was in the hospital room saying, please, please, God, take me out of this, this cruel world. I, I, I learned, I think what I need to learn, I don't need to be here. Please take me home. <laughs> and so for three days, I was just meditating and begging you to go home on the third day. I thought I was going crazy. I started hearing this voice, read your own book, dummy. Read your own book, dummy. Read your own book, dummy. I thought I was losing. I thought I was totally uh, bonkers, the, the, uh, crazy. And <clears throat> I kept in this voice, and I didn't even recognize the voice. I thought maybe it was my spiritual teacher or something, but it didn't sound like his voice, and, and uh, it, it was just very strange. And then I was interrupted from this meditation and hearing this voice saying, read your own book, dummy. Uh, well, a nurse coming into the room and kind of startling me and says, oh, I'm sorry to disturb you, but uh, we're just so busy now. And she sets something on the bedside table and says uh, to me, uh, I, I'm so busy. I'd love to read this, but we're, we're so busy. I'm going to look for it online. I don't know what she's talking about. I didn't even recognize this nurse. But I looked down at the table, and it's my book, Sound Medicine. And I didn't even have the book with me in the hospital, you know, before I went in the coma. So I don't know where the book came from, but anyway, it, it, it was, I'm, I'm just hearing this voice in my meditation, read your own book, dummy, read your own book, dummy, and it gets delivered to me. I mean, what kind of miracle is that? I mean, this is honest to God truth. I look down, I see my book summons, and I pick it up, I start thumbing through it, which I probably hadn't done in many months, but, and I said, wow, I wrote this, and I'm, you know, kind of engaged in my own writing and remembering, and all the thoughts that came when I was kind of channeling the information in the book. And, uh, <clears throat> and I started realizing that I wasn't practicing what I was preaching. I was reading about nobody's a victim unless you choose to be a victim. And I realized I was choosing to be a victim. I was in the hospital. I was suffering. I'd lost my home, my sound therapy center, my, my life savings, everything. And, you know, I was really feeling this victimhood. And I said, you know, I got to, this isn't right. I'm not practicing what I'm preaching. But, you know, the line that really did it for me, a few pages later, I was looking at, in this line that everything happens for our upliftment, absolutely everything. And I truly believe that. And that, you know, I guess it's time and space that something in that moment in time and, and reading that in the book and the, the, the angel that delivered the book to me and and, you know, it's just timing, I guess. But I just read that line over and over again. Everything happens for our upliftment. And I know I've always believed that for years, but I wasn't uh, practicing it. And I decided in that moment, I, that was my aha moment. It's like I hit bottom. I was in the hospital. I was like, you know, just coming out of a coma. I couldn't even walk or let alone stand up. I lost 85 pounds. I mean, you know, I was on dialysis, going through all this stuff. But I knew that I didn't have to be a victim. And I totally did believe that everything happens for upliftment. And I said, I don't know what's, what the purpose of all this is, but I know I worked off a lot of karma and I have faith in spirit. I have faith in God and I'm moving forward. I'm not going to, this isn't going to keep me down. And from that moment, that was like, when was it? The end of January, two thousand. Uh, 11. My life has changed. So many wonderful people have come into my life, wonderful new friends, students, everything. I've had so many blessings. The new sound therapy center where I am uh, is a little smaller, but it's much nicer and newer, and I'm very happy here. And I won't go on anymore about uh, my blessings. I'm just very, very grateful to be alive and being 
be here with you. It's, it's Father's Day, and I just want to send my love and blessings to all the fathers out there that are responsible and loving, and to all the women and children that love and respect their fathers. Uh, my father has been long past for, you know, many years, but uh, I really send my love out to him wherever he is, his spirit, and to my spiritual father. And uh, I, I wish that love and blessings to ever, all the fathers out there and all those who love their fathers, which hopefully is, is everybody, uh, because we can always find our purpose and our upliftment. So let me move forward and I'm sorry to digress, but I just felt uh, moved to share this with you because many of you don't know my healing story and also how I healed myself of hepatitis C uh, that uh, trashed my liver for many years. And because I was uh, vegan and good health, I, I never had any symptoms, but I had hepatitis C for many years and it caused a lung disease that put me on oxygen 24 seven for two and a half years. And here I was speaking at health conferences with oxygen tanks in my car. And on the lunch break, I'd go out and hit, hit up on oxygen because who's gonna listen to some guy with tubes in his nose and oxygen tanks like a, a chain smoker or something. I never smoked cigarettes or anything, but you know, it was just freaky. But I felt like a hypocrite, but all that's behind me now. I mean, thanks to sound therapy and the Lord's grace, I, I've healed so many things. I've healed my lung disease. I've healed, I got off dialysis to the amazement of the doctors told me I'd be on dialysis the rest of my life. I've healed my kidneys with sound therapy, my uh, uh, liver, my uh, countless things, pulmonary hypertension. I won't get into, get into all that now, but you can check out some of the videos on my website, wayneperry.com, if you're interested in some of the other things that I've discussed. But right now, Getting to the frequencies of food and organic life here, you know, uh, even though we have to kill on this plane, uh, if we concentrate on killing on the lowest level, the lowest frequency possible, this enables us to move within, to raise our frequencies to the spiritual levels. Uh, most people, when they talk about spiritual experiences, uh, they're not really talking about spiritual experiences, they're talking about astral experiences. Now, I'm not here judging anybody's you know, experience or work, but in my own personal experience and the people that I work with, my students and clients, I've learned in my own meditation, my own spiritual path, that there's so many levels of awareness on the astral level of consciousness, not to mention the causal level of consciousness beyond that, before we get to the spiritual. We're not going to have true, true spiritual experiences until the vessel is clean. And one of the ways that we clean our vessel is with our thoughts and emotions and with the food we put into our body. This is very, very important if you're serious about uh, lifting your consciousness and rising up spiritually. So I wanna talk to you a little bit about this because I'm very, very grateful that I've, I've so improved my health, you know, not only with diet, mostly with, uh, with sound therapy and, and meditation and, and the Lord's grace, but, um, what I want to talk about now is the five frequencies. There's five frequencies of life and, or that make up organic life. And of course, food is a part of organic life. And so, yes, we have to kill in this plane, tiny little one-celled animals, insects, things that we walk over and the things that might be in our food or the liquids that we drink. I don't want to focus their attention. I, I'm thinking too much about all that, but, but we can take responsibility by understanding that the worst thing that we could do, you could call it a sin, you could call it karma, you could call it whatever you want, but the worst thing karmically that we could do is take the life of another human being. Okay, so I mean, even in most religions and scriptures and cultures, you, to take the life of another is not, you know, not good, you know, and of course the law, you know, punishes us for it, but more importantly, the spiritual laws of universal consciousness and uh, we're kind of punished through our karmic uh, activity and, and the, the life that we go through, or lives, I should say, if you believe in the transmigration of the soul and reincarnation, which I happen to. But this is, is not about that subject. Yeah, about 90% uh, of the world's uh, religions believe in reincarnation. Uh, many people don't. But the important thing I want to focus on here is taking responsibility 
for what you kill. You know, it, it just by your hand, you know, yeah, you can, some people hire people to kill other people, which is, you're still responsible for that. That's your karma. Whether you do the deed or you hire somebody, that's the worst sin or karma that you can create is taking the life of one or more people. But because a human being has all five frequencies and the frequencies so that you can understand what I'm saying in terms of the frequencies can be best understood in terms of the elements. The five frequencies correlate to the five elements of earth, fire, air, water, and ether. So again, earth, fire, air, water, and ether are the five elements that correspond to the five frequencies. And we live in this world of sound and vibration and frequency. Everything is frequency. And the principle, the, the, the quantum physics principle that's important to remember here and to understand is that the form and density of all matter is determined by its frequency. If you have a pen and paper, you should write this down so that you don't forget it because this is a very important healing principle, physics principle, and living principle is the form and density of all matter is determined by its frequency. Okay, so density is a much better word than solidity because physics teaches us there's no such thing as solid matter, nothing solid, but there are degrees of density. This is what's important to understand. The higher the frequency, the less density. Okay, so talking about the human body, when we take the life of another human, all five frequencies are active but only human beings have the etheric frequency active. And it's through the etheric frequency that we can actually experience God realization while in resonant within the physical body, within the human body. We don't have to wait to go to heaven or to some other dimension to have to experience God realization. We can potentially, at least, if we live a clean enough life and, and a good enough life, we can and the grace and the karma permitting all this, we can experience God realization while in resident in the physical body. So um, keep in mind that only human beings can, can have this experience. Animals can't have the experience of God realization. It's, it's a blessing that's given to, to us as human beings that we should value and appreciate because it's only through this body that we, we can experience God consciousness. Okay. So all five frequencies are activated, all five elements, all five frequencies within the human body. So obviously the worst sin would be to take the life of another uh, human being. So next in line, karmically and frequency-wise, is warm-blooded animals, mammals. There's really no difference between us as humans, because we're basically like animals, and warm-blooded animals, but the only difference is the etheric frequency. We have five active frequencies, animals have four. They have four active frequencies. The only missing frequency is the etheric frequency that gives uh, us uh, the ability to have consciousness, God consciousness. Animals uh, don't. They can still do what we do. They can, they, they experience, I think, humor and vitality and and love and appreciate various things and they eat they procreate all the things pretty much that we do but they're just missing that uh, etheric frequency but they will evolve <coughs> with God's grace to be a human being in a future lifetime and have the same opportunity that we have that we shouldn't waste that we should use and as they say in in cultures and religious scriptures build our treasure in heaven that, I believe, is our purpose here in this dimension, is to build a treasure in heaven. We can't take this body with us. We can't take our money, our possessions. We can't even take our family with us. The only thing we can take it with us is our soul and what we build in heaven, which, which comes with sound and meditation. <clears throat> and meditation on the inner sound current within the body that gives every human being life. And every human being has this opportunity. Nobody has the the uh, disadvantage of not having the sacred sound current or what I like I like to refer to as the inner overtone that's present within every human being but to get in touch with it is you know not an easy thing we have to to 
kind of purify our thoughts and our emotions and our mind, which is that basically negative. You know, the mind is, is really the devil. The devil isn't a red guy in it with a tail and a pitchfork. You know, it, it's just the mind. And the mind is the great, can be a great blessing to study and learn from. And, but it's like fire, you know, it can warm our, our house and cook our food, but it can also burn our house down and burn up our bodies. That's the nature of fire. And the mind is very similar. The mind is inherently negative. If we're honest with ourselves, we can catch ourselves in negative thoughts, judgments, you know, evil thoughts sometimes. I mean, it just depending on our karma. Uh, the, the mind is inherently negative. That's why it it's dominates the soul. And so the, everything is kind of backwards in this dimension. The soul is overrun by the mind. The, the mind is overrun by the emotions. The emotions are overrun by the senses, and the senses are overrun by the objects of sense in the outer world. And this does, isn't to mean that, that every sensual pleasure should be forbidden, but but so much emphasis is put on sex and food and enjoyment and pleasure and all these things in the outer world. That's not going to take us home. That's not going to go with us. So, okay, it's okay to experience those things with an, with an attitude of detachment, not to be attached to those things because they don't go with us. We have to be attached to the spirit. We have to be attached to the sacred sound current, that inner overtone within that's the only thing that's going to take us home. That's the only thing that's going to free us. Of course, love, but that's one and the same thing. True love comes from spirit. It's spiritual love. And we're given worldly love to teach us and guide us and lead us to spiritual love. But worldly love is imperfect. And we can learn from it and it can be a beautiful thing to experience. But the purpose of it is to take us to spiritual love. But it's difficult to love God and love uh, something esoteric that we don't have in front of us. So we have the, the, the physical presence of another human being, the physical body, so that we can learn to experience love and deepen our love and then move and hopefully be inspired by true unconditional love to love God and to move within our journey. So, okay, I've digressed a bit, which I tend to do. Any, anybody who knows me will know because it's not Wayne, you know, that's really speaking to you. You know, I, I try to allow spirit to come through, and I'm just kind of a mouthpiece. So uh, the human beings have all five frequencies active. Four-legged, warm-blooded animals, mammals, whatever you want to refer to them, have four active frequencies. So when we take the life of animals, this is very – karmically um, heavy on, our, on the soul and is not good. So <clears throat> besides the health benefits that it putrefies in the colon and, and uh, creates mucus and is, is the, one of the many sources of cancer and disease, I mean, there's all sorts of reasons. If you do your research honestly and properly, you'll find that, that you really shouldn't be uh, uh, taking the life of animals. You know, there's, there's no excuse for it, really, uh, because you're taking on so much karma, it's, it's too difficult then to meditate, to do spiritual devotion when you're carrying that kind of karma of the deaths of all these, these animals that are carrying four frequencies. That's a lot of energy. Uh, and so that's what's contained within four-legged mammals, warm-blooded animals is four frequencies that we should honor and respect and love all animals. And next is fish and fowl. Now, fish and fowl have three active frequencies. Two of those frequencies are dormant. So these three active frequencies uh, give them life. And so they're less conscious than warm-blooded animals. And of course, less conscious than human beings but they're still conscious beings and they still have three active frequencies. And so when we kill or condone the killing of fish and fowl, we're contributing to that karma. We're taking on that karma on the soul, which makes it very, very difficult to meditate, very, very difficult to make spiritual pros uh, progress when we're carrying that karmic load of killing uh, and, and consuming that kind of uh, food just for our own enjoyment and our own pleasure. When it isn't necessary, if we look at nutritional guidelines, you can learn you get more than enough protein with, 
you know, things like beans and nuts and all sorts. And we don't need as much protein as we think we need anyway, or people will have you believe you need. Uh, but anyway, that, that's for another uh, video. So you can explore that on your own nutritionally if uh, you want to. But there's all sorts of reasons by the, to show that we're, we don't have the teeth of the body or the colon to, uh, to consume flesh foods and animal foods or fish and fowl. So, uh, like I said, fish and fowl have three active frequencies, three active elements, two are dormant. So when we go down next in the evolutionary scale is, is insects and reptiles. Insects and reptiles uh, are lower consciousness still, but they still have two active frequencies and, uh, and three are dormant within their bodies. So those two active frequencies uh, or elements in the elements corresponds to earth and fire. But the important thing is to understand that they still have two active frequencies. So it's not a wise thing to kill or consume uh, insects or reptiles. It's not as harmful to us as fish and fowl or animals, but it's still not good. It's still a heavy load of energy and karma to carry for the soul to carry and makes it extremely still difficult to meditate and to ascend and make spiritual progress and raising our, our frequency. So that brings us to the last uh, form of life, which contains only one frequency, and that's, uh, that's the frequency that comes down to water, but the frequency is, is plant life. And so that's why it's so important to uh, subsist and live on plant life, to keep our frequency high and our karma low. That's the secret to life. Low karma, high frequency. And being moral and loving and loving all life forms. And you might say, well, you're killing the, the plants and you're killing the animals. And this is true. But we have to subsist. That's the way the creation is set up. We have to kill, as I said at the beginning of this presentation. We're killing when we're drinking a glass of water with the tiny little one-celled animals, amoebas, paramecium, and uh, the, the ants and life forms that we kill when we walk down the street. So we have to kill. The responsibility, though, and the important thing to recognize is to kill on the lowest frequency level possible. That's the rub. That's the key, is to, is to ask for forgiveness from God for killing, you know, but... He understands we're in this plane, this training ground, and this plane of consciousness in the third dimension to learn these lessons of unconditional love and to love our fellow man and to love animals and to deepen our love and to learn to be more and more selfless. And when we become more and more selfless, we understand sound. The people that I work with with sound, I'm always impressed by the people that are drawn to this work because they're usually very high conscious, very sensitive people that are drawn to sound work because they have kind of an intuitive knowing and sensitivity that everything is sound. We live in a vibrational world. And, uh, and so when we, again, when we take the life of another human being, uh, we're creating the, the greatest karmic load, the greatest karma. So to have to perhaps come back for many, many lifetimes to pay off the karmic debts. And when we take the life of animals, it's not as severe, but it's a pretty heavy karmic debt. And fish and fowl that have three frequencies, it's, it's still pretty heavy on the soul. And insect and reptile is two active frequencies, two active elements. Uh, the best way to go is to just kill on the lowest level possible, which is plant life. So you can easily get enough nutritional needs if you study nutrition to get fruits, nuts, vegetables, seeds, uh, even some grains, but even grains aren't even particularly necessary. I think uh, a raw food diet is really the best if your body can tolerate it, but you know, even cooked food, a combination of raw food and, uh, and some cooked food, depending on your body, you learn to adjust to the percentages of raw food and the percentages of, uh, of cooked food that your body uh, needs to assimilate and to be healthy. Everybody's a little different. But the important thing is subsist on plant-based food. There's all sorts of, you know, meat substitutes, delicious dishes. I'm so grateful for the lady that works for me 
for almost six years now and prepares my food. It has all my vegan recipes, does my shopping. Like I said, I'm so blessed in the, the nine years since I was in a coma to have such wonderful people around me. And I want to send a, another shout out to Aura, who works for me as my uh, you know personal assistant, does all my shopping and cleaning and cooking and and just is a wonderful, blessed soul, or ain't literally an angel. She's literally an angel that was sent to me from spirit. I, I truly believe that because she's just a selfless, loving person. And she's a great inspiration to me to keep me focused and living in, in love and unconditional love on a daily basis. So I want to thank you for listening and tuning in. I want to close by just talking. Uh, I've said this before in some of my other videos, but just to mention so that you understand how your body consists of sound, that everything in your body is sound. If you look at the densest part of your body, forget about the word solid, there's no such thing as solidity, but there is density. And as I said in the beginning, that you might want to write down that the form and density of all matter is determined by its frequency. Well, this goes for your body. What's the most dense part of your body? If you think about it, and since you can't respond to me in this video, I'll answer it for you. The densest part of your body is your bones and teeth. That's the densest, you could say most solid, but solid's not a good word. Dense is a better word. Has the most density is your bones and teeth. If you want to be real technical and left-brained about it, your tooth enamel has the most density uh, of your whole body. But that being said, that's the lowest frequency sound is your your bones and teeth. That's the lowest frequency sound in your body. Now, as you step it up and look at the rest of your body, let's look at your skin and your muscles and your organs. Now, this is higher frequency sound. So as the frequency gets higher, now there's less density, okay? And the form, form and density changes with frequency. Form and density is determined by its frequency, okay? So your bones and teeth are very, clearly defined in terms of their density. You try to change the form or density, you shatter or break the bones or teeth. But your skin, your organs, your muscles, that's different because it's higher frequency sound. Your body is 100% sound. So your, bone, your um, muscles and organs and tissues are higher frequency sounds, so now they have some malleability. You can stretch the muscles. I work with Reiki masters, I work with massage therapists, hypnotherapists, body workers, doctors, chiropractors, people that understand. They try to relieve scar tissue and uh, relieve tension and stress that exists within the muscles and the musculature. And so you have malleability. So it's not as rigid, it's not as dense because there's more malleability. So the form is not quite as fixed. So there, but within reason, you can, there's a certain amount of stretch malleability, but there's still a specific form and density, but it's different because it's higher frequency. Now let's move it to the third step in the body. Let's look at our fluids. The blood, water, and fluids in the body are much higher frequency sound if you're in your sound body. So if I were to ask you, what's the form or shape of your blood? How would you answer that question? Well, since you can't respond to me in person, but I ask this questions at presentations that I do, and it's interesting the responses that I get. But see, the, the, the answer to that question is, see, we've now moved vibrationally into the realm of the amorphous. So from density, we're from the physical body, when we move into the blood and fluids in the body, we're into the level of what's referred to as the amorphous. Amorphous means that the form is determined by the container. So the form and shape of your blood, for instance, is determined by your skin and your skeletal structure. Very simple, pretty, uh, pretty obvious actually. But a better example might be, uh, another example at least, is if you took a pitcher of water, you filled up a pitcher with water, and you went you know, near your kitchen and you dumped the pitcher on the tile floor, the linoleum floor of your kitchen can't predict the form it would take. It might make a big puddle. It might make two puddles. It might make a string of droplets. So this is where it starts to get dicey, where the form and density starts to change, the higher the frequency. So <clears throat> the form is determined by the container of the water, the container of the body. So now 
that part of your body, the, the, the fluids and blood in your body, are much higher frequency than the bones and teeth and the skin, muscles, and organs because it's rendered the realm of the amorphous. Okay, so that's a little brief analogy of how, how your body consists of sound. <clears throat> but you're more than just a sack of chemicals. You have an emotional body within your physical body. You have a causal body or mental body. You have an astral body and you have a spiritual body, a soul body. So in the interest of time, we're not going to explore all of these. I explore some of it in the videos that are free to view on my website, wayneperry.com. But suffice it to say that in closing this video that <clears throat> we consist of sound. This emotional body that we have is within our physical body. It's actually uh, expressive and connected to the astral body. The real body itself is the astral body, and that's within the physical body. And within the astral body is the mental or causal body. And causation is how the world was created. It was created through spirit, but through from spirit through causation, which is a form of mental capacity, the mental body. So we're getting into metaphysics here, but which I'm happy to discuss. I love discussing metaphysics, but uh, to keep things brief and to simple, we have all these bodies, actually universes within us. You know, the whole physical universe is within the bo physical body. People don't get that we're having the same uh, universal projection of the same illusion, looking out into the, the planets and into outer space. You know, it's kind of pointless to go on a rocket ship to visit what you can visit in, in instant by going into the third eye, going within, because as it says in many scriptures, the kingdom of heaven is within you. It's all within you. The whole physical universe is vast as, as it is. It's within your physical body. So don't think about going into outer space. Meditate, go within and discover what's available to you in the physical body. And then within that, as vast as the physical universe is that's within your physical body, as vast as that physical universe is, it's like a drop of water that you drop off the Santa Monica Pier into the Pacific Ocean, into the, uh, into the uh, astral universe. That's how vast the astral universe. See, our minds can't wrap around these, these concepts. They're, they're infinite. And so the physical universe can fit inside the astral universe like that drop of water in the Pacific Ocean. And then, to, to continue that analogy, the, the uh, astral universe can fit into the causal universe, all of this which is inside your physical body, all of us, uh, like a grain of sand within the Sahara Desert. You know, that's how vast the, causal, the um, uh, astral universe is to the causal universe. You know, and then you talk about the spiritual uh, universe that's within that, within the causal universe, is also within your body. It gets beyond the, the comprehension of the, of the finite mind. That's the thing. We try to understand God with the finite mind, and it's not possible. It's like putting the ocean in a teacup. You can't do it. You know, you have to get out of your head and get into the heart. That's the only way to start to experience and appreciate true spirituality, true love, and that's the journey within is a journey of love, not, as, not a journey of the mind. Yeah, we go through the emotional, the astral, the mental, and causal to get there. But we have to stay focused on the love and the sound current within and the spirit. And so that's how our bodies consist of sound. So meditate every day. That's the only thing that goes with you. Build your treasure in heaven. Your sound, light, and love are the only things that go with you. So that's what you should be living your life for. That's what you should spend time every day focusing on. Yeah, we all have responsibilities. We have families, jobs, work, responsibility. That's great. That's our, our karma, and it's beautiful. We can enjoy it, love it, appreciate it, have fun with it. But don't forget your purpose in being in this dimension and this training ground of the physical universe. Don't worry about what's going on politically and the wars and oppression around the world. If you think about it, it just breaks my heart when I give it too much attention. But there's never been peace in the world. There never will be peace in this dimension. That's not the purpose of it. It's unfolding absolutely perfectly. Everything is unfolding for our upliftment and our highest good. Trust in that. Believe in that. Go within and find it to be true. Don't take my word for it. Go within and you'll get the benefit. 
anyway, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I send you my blessings of sound, light, and love. Thanks for giving me your attention. And remember, that's the most important thing that you have. Be mindful of where you give it. And give it to the Lord. Give it within to your higher self and to the Lord within. And meditate, meditate, tone and meditate. Toning and sound will help you to meditate. It's all connected. Build your treasure in heaven. Bye for now. Hope to see you soon. Come to, If you're in the L.A. area, we've got a toning group. This Thursday, the 21st, it's free, third Thursday of every month. And the next training workshop, certification workshop, will be August 25th and 26th before I leave for China. I'll be taking this work to Shanghai and Hong Kong in September. So if you're anybody you out there listening, join us in China. If not, join us in L.A. or join me on the phone or join me in spirit, wherever. Join me in heart. Namaste. Radhaswami. Bye for now. Love you.